What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a long-awaited MacBook, which returns with a razor-thin all-metal design, stunning retina display, all-new keyboard and force-touch trackpad, along with a fanless system, which makes the MacBook completely silent and the first fanless MacBook. The new MacBook also launches with a single USB Type-C connector, combining charging, data, display output, and more, which eliminates all other I.O. except for a headphone jack. It's also available in multiple colors from classic silver to space gray or gold, and we're going to take a look at all three colors in this video. Pricing starts off at $12.99 for the base configuration, which gets you the Core M Intel processor clocked at 1.1 gigahertz. They also get you 8 gigs of RAM. 8 gigs of RAM is standard across the board no matter what configuration you get, and of course you can't upgrade that yourself. We also have a standard 256 gig SSD, which is a step up from the 128 gig SSD, which is standard in the 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina and the MacBook Airs. We also get another upgraded configuration starting at $15.99 that gets you a 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD, so it doubles the SSD space. And for $17.49, you can bump up the processor to 1.3 gigahertz. All right, first up, let's get to the silver version here. We have to cut our plastic on the back, so let's go ahead and get a razor out. Next up, let's lift the lid here. And inside is our silver MacBook. First thing right away you see is that we no longer have a backlit white Apple logo. We have this polished aluminum, so no more lighted Apple logo on the back. Uh, so that's kind of a distinctive change here. Boy, as soon as you pick it up right away, you can see that it is all metal. You can see the metal hinge on the back. Really thin, lightweight, feels really nice. Feels a lot like a 11 inch MacBook Air when you're handling it, but it's much thinner. All right, I can see we have some plastic covering it here. Incidentally, this plastic is actually kind of this, uh, looks more like wax paper. It's a, more of a uh, frosted plastic, if that's a detail important to you. So let's go ahead and pull this off and slide it out. There we go. Very sharp. Now, if like all other MacBooks, you lift the lid, we should see a piece of paper, and there we go. Another piece of paper here protecting the display from the keyboard or vice versa. And there you go, you can see that keyboard right away, it goes edge to edge, really large keys, and we have that new keyboard technology, and of course we're going to explore that. We also have our very large trackpad, glass trackpad with force touch. Next up is the gold MacBook, and this is again a stock configuration here, so let's go ahead and slice into the packaging. Once again, the packaging reveals the coloring of the MacBook on the outside. I'm going to peel this off. And lift the lid. There you go, that is a lot of gold. Wow, that is sharp though. Very nice, uh, so let's go ahead and pull up the tab. So if you like your gold iPad or your gold iPhone, this is gonna be a nice companion device for you. So let me go ahead and peel off the plastic once again. Slide it right out. That's really sharp, it's got a nice subtle gold color and of course you have that polished Apple logo which is a separate component here. Uh, so just like on the iPad, it looks a lot like the back of an iPad. But again, if we lift the lid here, We'll see a piece of paper, again, protecting the glass from the keyboard. So as you can see, we have our black keyboard, our color match trackpad. So this is kind of a gold and black combination as opposed to the white and gold you see on iOS devices. So it's a little different here, but I think it looks really sharp. Next up is the configuration I've been waiting for, which is space gray. And this is the step up configuration, which gets us a 1.2 gigahertz processor and 512 gigs of storage. Of course, this will give me a chance to compare them to the stock or base configuration. So let's go ahead and slice into our packaging here. Lift the lid. Here we have our space gray and it's nice plastic wrapper. Let's go and peel that off. Looks really, really sharp. Wow, that is nice. That is really nice. Perfect, I really like that look. Again, polished Apple logo, it's a separate component, tinted to the color of space gray, just like on the iPad. Let's go ahead and lift the lid here to find the piece of paper, protecting the keyboard from the glass. Looks like it's stuck to the glass here, come on. There we go. Very nice combination, the black keyboard. Come on, get off. Uh, the black keyboard, the color match trackpad, the black glass display. I think it looks perfect in space gray, but of course, that's why they give you options. So if you like a different color, you can go for it. Now, before I get to the accessories, let's do our first boot here. Just gonna tap the power key in the upper right. Next up are all the accessories, and they have also been completely redesigned, and they're unlike anything you've seen before on the MacBook. So we have our new USB-C cable here. This is USB-C to USB-C, so let's go ahead and pop this out. So again, a really long cable. I'm not sure how long this is. 
let's go and stretch that out. But anyway, you can see two USB-C ports, one for connecting to the computer, the other for connecting to the power adapter, which you'll find under our literature packet. So, of course, designed by Apple in California. Let's go and pop this open. So inside we have our quick start guide, very small quick start guide. It shows you some OS 10 features, of course, all the ports, uh, the front facing camera and that sort of thing. We'll explore all that. We have our MacBook info. And then of course we have our Apple stickers. That's the one thing that hasn't really changed here. Okay, and here we have our new power adapter. So let's go and pull this out here. This is a 29 watt USB-C power adapter. So the cable is not permanently attached here. You can remove it. You can see that really tiny USB-C port on the back. Let's go ahead and connect that up. The great thing about USB-C again is that it is reversible. So you can plug it in in either direction. Very nice. So of course we also have our folding prongs and you can pop this off to uh, swap out the uh, plug. So if you are traveling and need to use a different plug, you can snap that on or add an extension cable, which is not included on this MacBook. Now taking a closer look at the design of the new MacBook, it's kind of a combination of a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro with a retina display. So we have this wedge shape to the MacBook, which gives you this nice angle to the keyboard, which feels very comfortable. But we also have the finishing details of the MacBook Pro with this anti-glare edge-to-edge glass panel, which I think looks a lot better than the chunkier metal surround on the displays of the MacBook Air. Now in terms of our display, this is 12 inches, 16 by 10 aspect ratio with a resolution of 2304 by 1440, good for 226 pixels per inch. So a nice high quality display, very similar to that on the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display. Now like the MacBook Pro with Retina display, we have good off access viewing angles, certainly much better than the MacBook Air. As you can see, there's a lot of distortion here when you change the angle of the display on the MacBook Air because that is not an IPS panel. We also have an anti-reflective coating, very much similar to the MacBook Pro display so it's a bit better than that on the MacBook Air. Now with the Retina display just like the 13 inch MacBook Pro we have 226 ppi so everything looks really sharp and clear especially compared to the MacBook Air. So if you look at the 11 inch MacBook Air that has a pixel density of 135 and it becomes very noticeable right away especially when you compare them side by side. 13 inch is even lower at 127 ppi so this is a really sharp display and certainly looks a lot better thanks to better off-axis viewing angles and anti-glare properties. Now along the right side, you'll find your headphone jack, which is a combination input jack for a microphone. We also have our dual microphones on the right side. Now along the left side, you'll find your single USB type C connector, which is used for everything from charging to data input or output to display output and more. So basically everything passes through this single USB port, which means you will likely need adapters and Apple doesn't include them with your MacBook purchase. So you will have to purchase them separately. So keep those costs in mind when purchasing them, but they have three accessories, a USB-C to USB adapter. This is what you'll need for standard USB cables, such as the lightning cable for your iPhone. We also have a USB-C to digital AV multi-port adapter. This allows you to connect uh, power uh, while also outputting HDMI and gives you another standard USB type A port. We also have a USB-C VGA multi-port adapter. So if you need a VGA output, you have that in addition to charging and a standard USB port. Now, unlike a MagSafe connector, the connection here with the USB-C is pretty strong. So it's pretty easy to yank this off the table if somebody trips over the cord. So keep that in mind. Also worth pointing out is when you connect your charging cable to the MacBook, you actually get a tone indicating that it's charging, which is very similar to the iPhone and the iPad. This is not something you hear on other MacBooks. Now, USB-C can handle data transfer speeds up to 10 gigs, 4K video at 60 hertz, as well as universal charging. So basically you can connect an external battery to recharge your MacBook, just like you would for a phone or a tablet. Now at the top of the display, we'll find our front facing camera, which is only 480p. That's probably due to the ultra thin design, which is a huge disappointment, especially for a lot of people, but we will test out this camera to see how it looks. We also have an LED indicator, which lets us know when the camera is active. We also have an ambient light sensor, which adapts the brightness of the keyboard and the display. We also have this all new metal hinge, which is integrated into the top lid of the computer. So no plastic here because they've been able to integrate the antenna into the metal chassis, which was part of the reason they had the plastic hinge before. We also have no real ventilation hidden behind the hinge like you see with other MacBooks. So everything is basically sealed up here. 
Now on the front edge, just like every other MacBook, we have a little thumbnail port for lifting up the lid of the display and the hinge is perfectly weighted so you can lift up the display without lifting up the very lightweight computer. So again, nice precise mechanism which feels really smooth. Now on the bottom, just like other MacBooks, we have a single panel held on with pentalobular screws. This is not meant to be removed by the user. Of course, nothing is upgradable in this computer. Basically everything is soldered or glued to the computer. Now take a look at our keyboard and trackpad. This is where a lot of innovation and changes have happened in order to enable this ultra thin design. So one of them is this all new keyboard, which features a dome switch, a stainless steel dome switch, plus a butterfly mechanism. The idea here is that because the keys are so shallow, uh, you need larger keys to strike so you don't miss them because you can't feel them as well as you could with previous MacBooks. So that means no matter where you strike these keys, they feel nice and even as opposed to other larger keys, which kind of wobble when you hit them. Now I can type really fast on this keyboard because the size of the keys are pretty forgiving and that mechanism makes the keys feel really even no matter how you strike them. So I actually really like this keyboard, but they are pretty shallow keys. You can't feel the keys as well as you can with other MacBooks. And when you strike the keys, they bottom out pretty short. So they feel a little more stiff, or a little more rigid. And sometimes uh, you don't quite hit the keys right. Uh, so you'll miss the keys. So I found myself doing that a few times here. Uh, but otherwise, I actually really like this keyboard because for whatever reason, it's so fast, possibly because there's less mechanical action here to delay your typing speed. Now the keyboard layout is a little different from other MacBooks. The escape key is larger. We also have larger directional keys and you can see some of the iconography on the keys at the top, the function keys have been changed or updated a little bit. The other big story here is that each key has an individual LED light. So the lighting looks a little crisper, a little sharper, maybe a little brighter and there's less leaking around the keys. So if you compare this to the MacBook Pro with Retina display, you can see there's a lot of light leaking around the edges and the lighting on the keys are a lot softer. With the MacBook, it looks a lot more precise, a lot clearer, although there is still some leaking around the keys, but otherwise it looks definitely a lot better. The new MacBook also integrates the new Force Touch trackpad we've already seen with the 2015 MacBook Pro. Now the trackpad on the MacBook is relatively large compared to other MacBooks, which takes up a significant portion of the palm rest, but never seems to get in the way. Now the Force Touch trackpad eliminates the physical click of a traditional trackpad and instead replicates the click with a vibration motor. They call this the Taptic Engine. The effect is completely indistinguishable from a physical click. It's really kind of amazing. It creates the sensation that the trackpad is physically moving even though it's completely stationary. Now because the trackpad is stationary, that means you can press anywhere on the surface and receive the same feedback. This is unlike a traditional trackpad which is hinged toward the top so it's stiffer when you try to press at the top. Now the new trackpad also integrates force sensors, which allows it to detect different levels of force, which adds a new dimension to the interface in OS X. So for example, we have a new gesture in OS X called force clicking, meaning if you press harder on the trackpad, you'll get a secondary click. So for example, if you force click on a thumbnail, a preview of the document or video will pop out. Force clicking on a word in a document will bring up a definition. You can also force click on media controls to speed up scrubbing and you'll actually receive some haptic feedback as you press harder on the trackpad so it feels like you're clicking through the various speeds. And it also slows down as you release pressure so it feels really mechanical even though it's completely digital. One of my favorite uses right now allows you to force click on a link on a web page in Safari so you can pop out a separate window to preview that page. So you can navigate through it, read it, and that sort of thing without having to open up a separate tab or window. Now there are countless ways you can use force touch and I'm sure more will be added in time, but I'm gonna link a video from Dom at Mac Mixing, which did a really good job exploring some of the other uses of force touching. So please check the description below for that link. Now toward the top at the thickest point of the computer, you'll find your front facing speaker. So again, we have stereo speakers. This is a different arrangement from other MacBooks, which place a speaker either behind the keyboard or at the edges like in the MacBook Pro 13 inch model. Now these speakers sound amazing. They're loud, extremely clear with good stereo range. Definitely one of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard on the MacBook and that's really surprising, especially considering the small size of this computer. So let's go and take a listen to these speakers versus the other MacBook speakers. We've designed a force sensing multi touch trackpad. This adds a new dimension of interaction. Touch sensors make the entire glass surface active. Force sensors measure a wide range of pressure from the lightest tap to the deepest press. The pressure you apply activates an electromagnet that responds with tactile feedback. So now instead of just seeing what's happening on the screen, you feel it too. 
Now to my ears, the MacBook sounds a lot clearer, a lot louder because the speakers are facing directly toward the user. So you hear every single detail in your audio. Now if you compare that to the others, they're more muffled sounding, although the bass sounds a little deeper. But generally speaking, I definitely prefer the speakers on the new MacBook. So what does a 480p camera look like? Well, that's what I'm recording with right now. Now, if you have plenty of light like I have right now, I have two light boxes shining on me right now. So really good frame rate, pretty good detail, and pretty good exposure. The only problem I've run into is if you're using this camera in low light conditions, it does a pretty poor job sort of compensating for that, and it gets really grainy, and uh, it also reduces frame rate. But otherwise, it's actually not as bad as I was expecting. But of course, you're going to have to tell me what you think. So what I'm going to do next is go to a FaceTime HD camera on the MacBook Pro 13-inch to see how that looks. So this is the FaceTime HD camera on the 13-inch MacBook Pro. So obviously much better results here, but generally speaking, the exposure and color are about the same. You just get a lot more resolution and detail. Now in terms of performance, I'm going to run some benchmarks to get an idea of the system performance for both the MacBook, the upgraded MacBook, and the MacBook Air, as well as the MacBook Pro. Now just so you know, the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro I'm looking at here are the base configuration. I previously reviewed them. These are the most current models. So if you want to know the specs of these, I will post them in the description below. But let's get to our Geekbench scores. So in terms of Geekbench, the standard MacBook scored 2453 on the single core score and 4561 on the multi-core score. Score. Now compared to the upgraded model, we do see modest gains here, 2539 on the single core and 5092 on the multi-core score. So the multi-core score sees a bigger gain here, almost 500 points. Now compared to the 11-inch and 13-inch MacBook Air standard configuration, those scored 2860 on the single core and 5735 on the multi-core. So that's a lot more power in those MacBook Airs. Of course, they're running full core i5 processors. We also have our new 2015 MacBook Pro with Retina display, which again on the Geekbench score scored significantly higher at 3283 on the single core and almost 7000 on the multi-core score. So keep in mind, the MacBook Pro is priced like the MacBook, so that's a lot of performance for the same 1299. Now, in terms of graphics performance, remember both computers have the same integrated Intel HD Graphics 5300 GPU. Uh, so no matter what configuration MacBook you get, you get the same GPU. So in this case, the Cinebench scores reveal about the same performance. 19 frames per second, about 19 frames per second for both configurations, and a little north of 200 on the CPU score. So 208 on the upgraded model and 201 on the base configuration. So very minor differences here. Now, both MacBook Airs see 25 frames per second and 250 on the CPU score, so pretty significant gain over the MacBook. And the 13-inch MacBook Pro increases that score even further with a 6100 GPU, so that gets us a 26.84 frames per second result and a 282 score on the CPU test. Now, in terms of our disk speeds, both MacBooks perform almost the same, although the read speed seems to be higher on the larger 512 gig SSD. So the write speed is at about 460 megs per second, while the read speed on the standard MacBook is around 780 versus 850 on the upgraded model. Now, the read and write speed of the 11-inch MacBook Air is about the same as the MacBook, but the 13-inch MacBook Air has a faster SSD. So that one sees a write speed of 650 and a read speed of 1400, which almost doubles the performance of the standard MacBook. Now the MacBook Pro sees about the same read and write speed of the 13 inch MacBook Air, but if you get the larger 256 or 512 gig SSD, you will see faster speeds. Now I'm actually really impressed by the performance of this processor, especially when it consumes such little power, runs about five watts, is completely fanless. Now I know a lot of people are concerned about overheating with this MacBook because the design is completely fanless. Now I was able to do some stress testing here. So I did some 4K exporting through Final Cut Pro and I was able to heat up the back of the computer to about 112 degrees at maximum. So that's not too bad. You certainly can get computers pretty hot even if they have fans running in them and performance was still pretty stable at those high temperatures. Now one of the more extreme real world tests we can throw at the MacBook is to edit and export 4K video. Now this is not its intended purpose here but it actually can be done. So with Final Cut Pro I have a 3 minute and 20 second project here and while editing it I can see that there is some frame dropping here, some skipping but otherwise performance is certainly much better better than I expected and it can be done at least with smaller projects like this. So the next test I want to do is run a export test to see how long it takes for each MacBook to export the same project. So the base MacBook completed the export in about 11 minutes while the upgraded model did it in 10 minutes. So one minute shaved off. That's a small gain here but it does make a difference. 
Now compare this to the MacBook Pro 13 inch, the same project exports in about eight minutes. So not a significant gain here considering just how much more processing power the MacBook Pro has. Now the standard MacBook can play back the 4K video just fine. Of course, it's scaled to the resolution of the display, but otherwise playback is excellent. In terms of dimensions, the MacBook is by far Apple's smallest, lightest, and thinnest MacBook on the market today, even besting the MacBook Airs by a significant margin. In fact, the MacBook is only 2.03 pounds. That's almost a pound lighter than the 11.6 inch MacBook Air, which has a smaller display. Now compared to the 11 inch MacBook Air, you can see just how much thinner the new MacBook is. So the MacBook Air is at about 0.68 inches versus 0.52 inches at its maximum thickness for the MacBook. In terms of width, the 11-inch MacBook Air is 11.8 inches, while the MacBook is only 11.04 inches. Now, in terms of depth, the 11-inch MacBook Air does have an edge over the MacBook at 7.56 inches versus 7.74 inches. Now, for such a thin and light laptop, we have a pretty large battery, 39.7 watt hours. That's bigger than the 38 watt hour battery in the 11-inch MacBook Air, certainly smaller than the 54 watt hour or the 74 0.9 watt hour battery in the uh, uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro. In terms of performance, that means about nine hours on the MacBook, which is the same as the 11 inch MacBook Air. Now as good as the 12 hours in the 13 inch MacBook Air or the 10 hours in the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So in conclusion, the MacBook is a stunning piece of design and technology. They've basically redesigned everything and made some major innovations. But ultimately, the MacBook is kind of hard to intellectually justify. This is really an emotional purchase because at $1299, you can get the excellent 13-inch MacBook Pro with Retina display, which gives you better battery life, gives you a Retina display, a lot more performance, and a lot more I.O., including an SD card slot, Thunderbolt 2 ports, and more. But the MacBook is undeniably attractive with a beautiful design. It's available in multiple colors, and it's a very capable computer. So for day-to-day -day operation, this is an excellent computer. It's great for web browsing, for posting to social media, looking at photographs, and even some light video editing. It's certainly not a computer you want to purchase for gaming, but ultimately I think this computer is a lot more capable than people think based on the specs alone, but it certainly isn't gonna meet the needs of everybody. So this remains a tough decision to make. Now in the end, I think this is the perfect MacBook for me. It's the perfect size, a great display, a great keyboard and trackpad. It's nice, thin, lightweight, and easy to carry around and handle in your lap. Uh, and that's generally what I use it for. I use it for responding to email, writing documents, browsing the web, watching video, stuff like that. If I wanna do any heavy duty production or use any heavy duty apps like Final Cut Pro or a photo editor, I'll do that on my main machine. And that's where I think it becomes a difficult decision. If this is your main machine, I would probably steer you toward the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina. But if this is a secondary ultra portable, I think this is a great computer for just about everybody. So that's gonna do for me in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.